Welcome. Uh, today, a very quick review of our three monohybrid crossits that we discussed so far. So it's, uh, it's sort of genetics uh, 101. Yeah, so I have three crosses written on my whiteboard here, and I'll quickly go over them uh, for you. First is our standard monohybrid crossing. So for example, I have two heterozygous uh, individuals crossing with each other. Yeah, so I'll put one individual on this side, I'll put the other one on that side. I'll get an F1 of, in a ratio of 1 to 2 to 1 in homozygous uh, dominant, heterozygous and homozygous recessive. W 1, 2 to 1, that ratio. Yeah, keep it in your mind. It's, uh, it's important to recognize that so you know which crossing we're talking about. So that's our standard monohybrid crossing. So let's go over to our sex-linked uh, monohybrid crossing. Uh, what we see here is two individuals, and as you can see, there's a man, because he has a Y chromosome, and he has the dominant allele for a trait, and we could call that um, seeing color, for example. Seeing color is a dominant trait. And we can see your lady here, uh, she has a dominant allele, so she sees color just as fine as he does, and uh, a recessive one, and so she's a carrier. You can only be a carrier if you carry two alleles. So she's a carrier, and he certainly is not. You can see color just as fine. Um, if we cross these two individuals, you can see I put the lady on, on top here, and my guy on the left-hand side, and I can see four individuals, four different individuals concerning this trait. We have a girl that can see color. We have a girl that can see color, but is, like her mother, is a carrier. We can see a guy that sees color, no problem with there, same as his dad. And we can see a colorblind guy here. He cannot see color. So, remember the questions, and uh, read them very carefully, because the questions, uh, they may differ, and uh, they may, you might have to give a different answer. For example, if the question is, what is the chance of this couple getting a child that is colorblind, your answer would be 1 out of 4, so 25%. If the question was, uh, uh, for example, what chance does this couple have of getting a boy that is colorblind, you can see we're narrowing down the options. These are the boys, so 50%. Okay. So look at the phenotype, yeah, very important in answering questions about sex link uh, traits. Last one, codominance. Codominance is when there's no dominant and or recessive allele. And I like to write that down in this way. So I have the I of intermediate and uh, that's helpful for me. Yeah, for myself, when I write these questions down, so I see, oh, this is a co-dominant question. This could be a, um, a red flower. This could be a plant with white flowers. And if I cross them, yeah, one allele goes to the offspring. I have an F1, so a next generation, that has a red from one plant, a white from the other. And so my plant will be pink. Um, it's going to get a bit more interesting if I cross this F1 generation times itself, which one can do with plants very easily. So I have a pink plant, I cross that with another pink plant. And what we see now, and that could be a good exercise for you at home, you have to practice. If you make a pollen square of this, we see a red plant exist, coming to existence in the second generation. We see also pink plants, and we see a white one. So we can see the two plants that we have in our parent generation. And we can also see the pink one that we came up with in our first generation. We have a different ratio though. We have one red plant to two pink ones to one white one. Very important yeah, that you are able to do these punnet squares yourself. You can remind me, you can pause me, yeah, look it over uh, by yourself one more time to practice for your test. I wish you good luck and... Uh, Happy uh, sorting out genetics.